Decorating Pages podcast presents Production Design Film Study. This class examines Oscar-nominated films spanning a century of cinema. Accomplished professionals in production design will explore and dissect the sets featured in these nominated films and will educate why they were recognized for the design of their time. This class features the films of 1968. This year's films are reviewed by set decorator Kim Wanup and set decorator Regina Graves. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for putting in all this time for these movies because it really wasn't just five movies. It was eight movies, right? We had four. It was. Yeah, eight <laughs> movies. <laughs> it was a long haul. For these for yeah, this. they were long movies I really didn't um I didn't count on that when I chose I mean I chose it randomly so yeah no, but it was fun it was fun I'm sorry it took six months for me to you know to <laughs> no. get through them all no it well I think it I don't think it took us that I mean it took us a while to connect to talk about it but yeah it did it it I took warm peace in stride I would say mm-hmm. <laughs> like maybe once a week for we sure but, um um but such a like span here of these movies from sci-fi to period to um recreating um in in Mm -hmm. fisherman and then all the broadway stuff in star like it was really a, a a span of some fantastic sets it definitely was so i was glad that i chose 1968 for my birth year so that was fun yeah I also had I mean at first yeah like looking at it going oh my gosh I have like you know (laughs) oh now you did go out now I don't hear you can you hear me now now I hear you okay good yeah yeah my internet's up I don't know what's going on here hmm Maybe I wonder there's... if it's my head, like my headphones. Oh, maybe. Do you want to try it without them or does you need them? Yeah, let me see. No, I don't really need them. Do you use them? No. <laughs> my equipment's pretty bare here. <laughs> mm. Do you hear me now? I don't hear you. I don't hear you. It tells me that you're talking actually, but it doesn't. Maybe. Maybe I'll just keep it then. I hear you now. Yeah, because I put him back in. Mm. All right, let me just try it like this. I'm sorry. I'm like the worst. Oh, no. No, no. I just don't want you to cut out if you're, if you're given your opinion on them. Yeah. Well, I hear you now. Or How do I disconnect these things? disconnect i think you put them back in the back in there yeah i did i put them in the case um i think there's that little dashboard up in the top sometimes you can like maybe it's still connected to them let me see like up here right up here in that little thing, it tells you, I think, if you're connected to them. Oh, like right up there. I think so. Yeah. But I'm not connected to them, so it doesn't say that. I can hear you. 
you can hear me. Okay, let's just go from here and see what happens. Okay, let's I'm try. sorry. Oh no, no problem. I just don't want to miss anything you say. <laughs> That's all. Um and but yeah, and vice versa. I don't want to miss yeah. what you say. Yeah. I uh I had only ever seen Space Odyssey out of these. Had you seen any of these before? I have. You have. Um I have, well, I saw Oliver. I mean, that was like the only one. I've watched Oliver so many times when I was a kid, but oh. never really paying attention like I did this time, I can say. Yeah, I think with all of the films that I've been able to watch through this and really watching it more with like a design and decorator eye is, is so much more enlightening. E even films I've seen many times and then, but but, but specifically mm -hmm. things, it's been, it's been awesome. Um, so yeah, like well, again, yeah. it was, yeah, I, I definitely took the time to like really look at the sets and um, get more involved in it. I, uh, the production design for, the production designers for 2001 are Anthony Masters, Harry Lang, and Ernest Ash Archer, Archer, set decorator Robert Cartwright. And um, the film is about, after uncovering a mysterious artifact mm -hmm. buried beneath the lunar surface, a spacecraft is sent to Jupiter to find its origins. A spacecraft manned by two men and a supercomputer, HAL 9000. I'd have to say, I've watched this movie probably three times in my life. I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> I mean, I'm reading that synopsis the other night, putting this together, and I was like, is that what it's about? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. I'm not good at this movie at all. <laughs> but I love I, I love the reference of it. I love that everybody references it and it's design, but I don't get the movie. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had to actually like look up the ending of the movie to what it was all about. And then <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, oh, okay, now I get it a little bit. Um but I don't know. I think it was just really designed to be like this visual because there's hardly any dialogue. If you really think yeah. about it, there's like nothing going on except for creepy Hal and, you know, some interaction with like the, the space guys. But as far as like, you know, the design of it, it's just kind of crazy that this was designed in 1968 to me. I'm just like, this is really crazy. It's just so and we go back and we do modern films now. And so much of this film is referenced still because the sets hold true for today's like futuristic vision of it all. Oh yeah. Like even like this, the airplane that they're in and like just uh, all of the details that they put into this one set that's on the screen for like a second. I think they do go back to it, but it's like everything is designed so well and has been like, infused into the minds of designers and decorators that this is it like this is what it was going to be I mean the white room has been referenced millions of times in commercials and other films and it's crazy and that ceiling I mean the when I watched this again I'm like the ceiling it reminds me of I mean that's been used so many times like in um like Batman one of the Batman begins or something mm -hmm. you know yeah. in all these different laboratories now you see that kind of ceiling um and it's so low. It's weird. Yeah. It's so weird. And um, like the, the red, you know, the red furniture, uh, that's just people yeah. are using that. But um, what got me uh, on this was the flat screens and all of the playback. And I was just like, I didn't realize they were so advanced in yeah. 1968 with these films and how, because I think playback now sometimes is like an issue, you know? Oh, yeah. And did it all and how they were just so right about it all especially like when he goes into the telephone booth you know to call his daughter and he has like an eye you know I I chat with her which was really wow. funny it was, it was like crazy it's like this and the Jetsons like predicted our future <laughs> um I just the subtle uses or bold uses of color in and out of scenes and sets is I think fantastic too mm -hmm. um all of and it's really simple shapes that they just kept using in re repetition and you see that later in star wars too of how like they they used all that too i'm sure they referenced this 
this is a, like a classic scene of like how did they do that and turning the camera and like fascinating I, I can't imagine the first time you see this because I'm a, I'm kind of like oh I saw many cool things before I saw this so this must have been awesome in 1968 to watch you know or people just like blown away by it, going like what did I just yeah. you know just see or like it was it's just crazy to even think about that and yeah that just reminds me so much of like even walking into the TWA you know uh yeah lobby or something but and the Hilton I mean all of it the the vending machines I mean it's just so and you're right yeah. look at the big screens yeah and they don't even have anything on them <laughs> it's crazy we could never not have something on the screen that's even better <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And the whole pitch of the roof that they designed. And I just, I just wonder how, like how much of this was designed more so by um, the director. Now I'm blanking on his name. Kubrick. Yeah. Kubrick. Because I feel well, like he was pretty, <laughs> he knew what he wanted and that's it. Yeah. I was reading that. Um, you know, that he had like or all, all these, you know, he hired people from NASA and like IBM and mm -hmm. um, people that, you know, worked in the aeronautics business, you know, all all of that. And they just I think even one of the production designers might have worked for NASA or something I read. Um, I think that was the last one, the last guy that I read. Then or was it this Robert Cartwright? You no, know, but you like compare this, you compare something like this, like Star Trek, you know, in Star Trek, you look at it now and you're like, oh, it's so kitschy. And, you know, did they make that out of like a tin can, you know, it's just, they got it. They just did it really well, obviously on, on, uh, on this movie. And that's why it's probably referenced so much nowadays. It just, yeah, it's crazy that I don't think that ever we've evolved a whole lot either, which is mm -hmm. crazy to me which is like a bummer because I feel like a lot of times people still reference minority report and you're yeah, like yeah. that was 20 years ago so can we not do minority report <laughs> can we <laughs> we stay in this room till we think of something new <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um these chairs are fantastic they had to have built those that uh, they're not real right <laughs> no. I don't know those those look like they had been been built I haven't see something like that around yeah. but like you said the subtle use of the colors and they're all like the blue the yellow the red like all the, just like a, a primary color just pops in any of the screen you know in any of the sets against the white basically um and again just big white walls like mm -hmm. this tv had no fear <laughs> it was great it's so great and all great. Was great. like Let's look I mean, at that you know I don't know you know you're you're on that futuristic um show right now did you have a hard time sourcing when you were building the spaceships and oh yeah I mean there was we built all the consoles that the um designer and art directors designed and then it gets kind of handed over to set deck on in LA like mm -hmm. I I feel like in New York you the decorator would have designed it more but here they design it and then we kind of pay for it and do, you know, manufacture it, whatever. Um, um, but that designers usually design it, but we'll have to find like a lot of the pieces that like the, the <laughs> half round, um, you know, uh, tops here on, on these beds. We yeah. just did something like that recently. And I remember like, you know, I had to get them custom made and they were so expensive. And I'm just wondering like, you know, in 1968, did they have teams like we have, you know, buyers and shoppers? Did they just have one decorator? You know, who sourced all of this? You know, I I think it was just, I mean, they credit one person. I didn't go deep into it, but I mean, you this had to have been an army of, mm -hmm. of set designers. And I mean, there's so many sets that you see once or t maybe twice, you know, quickly. There's just, a, there's so much going on. I can't, I think feel like there was something about they used like those the biggest stages they had in the UK um and, and I didn't I didn't read how long they had to shoot this whole film but I can't imagine the prep must have been like a year or something back then. and I always think like back then it must have <laughs> taken longer right <laughs> to have I think yeah definitely 
Because we had like six months, five months or something to do season four for all mankind. And that was building like, you know, huge Mars and two spaceships and everything. And that was, that was even tight. And the sets weren't even ready to shoot really. So yeah, I I mean, and then, you know, the, the going out on the surfaces and all of this gack and everything, it's fantastic. It's it just, you know, mind blowing that they did all this. I mean, I've watched films from the twenties and everything that my mind is blown that they did all that. But this sci-fi to me is such a new, you know, uh, genre in 1968 that it's so great. Well, yeah. this, I thought props. I mean, why are we going back to square dishes for things? How funny is that? I love that. And look, he's got an iPad. You're right. Yeah, every, it's just, it's crazy. Like all the different screens. Yeah. But yeah, we would have, you know, building the consoles, those chairs and everything. We built, we built chairs. So I know they had to manufacture all of this. Mm -hmm. And that's all probably vinyl that on the walls and everything. Yeah. Get some drapers in there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just so many buttons. So many light up buttons. It's crazy. But they also look really good. Yeah. And they all look really good. Like the star, you know, sometimes, like I said, I'd look at Star Trek and like, ooh so bad you know um yeah but maybe that, that's all like they didn't have like the best resources but it's just incredible that um this movie like you said was was made in 1967 68 and and it's just still people still go back and yeah how many times have you seen this certain, shot yeah, yeah. it's even crazy. the lighting the way the yeah. lighting panels are like the in, inset and everything the lighting is really great well, this like force, I, I'm thinking it's a force perspective to how they built it. And and then how this is definitely replicated in like Star Wars and Galactica and all those. And then this huge room. I mean, I can't imagine how many, <laughs> it's so many sets. This is crazy. This, it, cause you have to build a, this, none of this existed. That they didn't go somewhere. I mean, I'm sure they did all this, and then NASA was like, "Hey, let's do it like that." <laughs> let's... Yeah, the the colors. That, I mean, I, I didn't look up who the DP was, but Bravo. I mean, I could look that up, but I don't know. It's such a staple. And then you get to this part. I don't even know what's going on at this part. I have no idea what the story is. Well, so <laughs> that's the part I was like, what's going on here? So then I looked it up and it was just about like how it's supposed to be um, a, a, like a zoo, kind of like the human. He's left and he's looking, he's basically like looking at himself, but he's being observed almost in a zoo. Um, like how we put animals in a zoo, like how it started out with the apes in the beginning. But he's basically like looking at himself and looking at himself age and and get older and and he's trapped in this little space and that's where he finds his death. And, but but what but is the furniture. thing? Like I you know. the reasoning for this? Yeah. <laughs> what, this isn't even of his century. I mean, or his, that's what's crazy to me is how this, what is it? That Seldon, Seldon, Seldon green, which I love. I love that color. But like, it's just fantastic. It's just completely something you shouldn't be in this movie. This like neoclassic type of design and decor. It's crazy. I don't get it. And people love it and I don't get it. (laughs) But yeah, I I don't, the big, the big wall. Yeah. So you're right. So there he is watching himself get old. Beautiful bed. Look at the tufting and like. Yeah, look at it. It's just all, and it's all like everything is, seems like it's built in. Like everything's just built into the wall and. Yeah, all the moldings and everything just connect. Again, like, I don't know, the painting, everything is, 
And then I saw something, uh, now I forget. I saw something where these walls were used again in another movie. Damn, I had that. I read that somewhere. Now I can't remember what movie it was. <laughs> but they are- these Walls were used in another movie? That's so funny. Yeah. You can see like those painting walls were used in another film. Different paintings, but same, same layout. I'm sorry if you hear my, do you hear these dogs moaning? No. Oh. I don't hear. Him. You hear anything breathing? It, that's it's <laughs> heavy. Time. You're heavy breathing over 2001. <laughs> <laughs> Salivating um, for these sets and the big domino, the the monolith. <clears throat> I think what's exciting is like when you're reading this as a decorator and you're like, wait, then we get to do what? Mm -hmm. then, then like a total change of error and the period and everything comes in. I mean. After doing all those buttons, I'm sure anyone was so happy to dive into this one. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm curious. I didn't read about this. I want to read why, like, why the the furnishings they date back. So, you know, you go from the uh, futuristic to way, you know. Yeah, because it was not part of his world. He wasn't that old. But um, I think you're right. I think it was Ernest Archer was uh, the guy from NASA. Because I feel like I read that too. And Robert Cartwright, I did 1980 in this film study and he did Elephant Man. It's just a phenomenal career he had. Definitely. So yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to say it now. I kind of think 2001 should have won. I, I feel the same way after like seeing who won and everything. I mean, they all look pretty great and they're all different. You know, it's like, how do you um, judge between them? It's like, I feel like that's almost like every year, well, especially yeah. like this year with the Oscar nominees, but this one, because it's so, I just feel like it was never done before and never done in that way. Well, yeah. So original and so grand and so timeless, you know? Well, I think you find that with a lot of the years, period usually wins. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, we'll go to Oliver, who is the winner. Um, and I, I, well, production designer John Box and Terrence Marsh, and set decorators Vernon Dixon and Ken Muggleston. Muggleston? Mm -hmm. Muggleston. Muggleston? Muggleston? Yeah. I had never seen this, but I feel like to have seen different parts of it, you know, referenced or seen different parts here and there. Um, but I had never seen it. But the the movie is about after being sold to a mortician, young orphan Oliver Twist runs away and meets a group of boys trained to be pickpockets by an elderly mentor in the 1830s London. Um, yeah, I... I guess I should have seen this or I should have read this in high school or something. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I think I saw it on like one of those Disney like weekends, like well, the wonderful world of Disney on a weekend. But I remember, I, I actually saw this a couple of times because I remember the whole Oliver, like more please yeah. with his porridge. Um, but like I said before, I never really, because I was younger, didn't take in like the sets. And once again, I was reading that because I wanted to see if any of this was shot actually in London. And they were saying that it was mostly um, done on the sound stages there, like the biggest sound stages that are in, in London. So you think about that and you're like, wow, like they really recreated all those street scenes and, you yeah. know, the, the, the railway and, and all of that. And for this <clears throat> Victorian era, and it was just, um, you know, a little theatrical, but pretty, yeah. again, like a, a, a you know, a lot of work went into these sets and um, oh. pretty authentic, I think. Yeah. And the, and the, the moodiness of them mm -hmm. and the and the the lighting of them were fantastic. But I read that, too. It, it covered six sound stages and a huge studio back lot with the scenes. The sets were adaptable. They could be changed out overnight in spite of their sturdy look, due to the fact that single dance numbers sometimes required changing setups over a dozen times. And the consider yourself number took three weeks to shoot. It's crazy. Oh <laughs> that's that's <laughs> crazy. Well, that I'm, we'll, get, crazy. we'll get to that scene, but this is like where he starts out. This is where he's an orphan and the 
the I like that iconic like you're saying like I want some more please mm -hmm. and, but just the symmetry that they gave this room I loved and like the barrenness of decor really and just the god is love is fantastic and then, yeah, they sell them to look at this town that they build with the snow. They sell them to a mortician, and then there's this whole thing with like coffins and um, which was funny because I had seen this, and then looking at that new Wonka movie, I was which, just thinking about that. There's a yeah. lot of similarities, right, between the Wonka and and this. There really, there really is because it really, the, the colors change so much throughout the film and maybe because it's, you know, the London and recreating all that, but it definitely rem reminisced of this in that, um, in Wonka with the, um, the washing shop and everything. Yeah. yeah, that was great. But yeah, this, this whole town, they built this whole town, fantastic. I mean, the forced perspective they give there and like, look at the columns and all the, it's a lot of background the whole time. Big dance numbers they had. But this is a lot of dressing. <laughs> it is a lot of dressing. And and even like dance, like the signage and, and you know, the graphics, I, I don't, I'm, I'm assuming they had a graphics department, but it's probably different back then, like sign, sign painting department. But um. And they must, you know, you have to think they had to work with like the choreographers to get the dance things right, just like in Wonka. Um, but yeah, the sets were massive. And I, all I kept on thinking was, I mean, I've never been to any of those prop houses out in, um, you know, in London, but I hear so, so much about them. Mm -hmm. Just like, I mean, if you can get anything of that period, I'm sure it's uh, there. Yeah. Look at those lights. Mm -hmm. That building. On the building or on the, yeah. Yeah. Lost, yeah. Those are great. And all of the things, all of the, um, like you were saying, the crates and everything that they have to use during all the, look at all the meat. Crates, yeah. the, baskets, the baskets, the barrels. Oh, the meat. You know, the I was meat. looking at that meat and I was like, oh my gosh, I uh, in the past I've done, I don't even know, like th three jobs almost in a row that we needed this hanging meat. And the meat is so bad that we had to get, you know, we can use some. The Irishman, meat. right? Yeah, for the Irishman. And then I, I was doing another movie in Philly where we needed hanging meat. And um, oh, then then my last job. But it's really funny because we were like, oh, maybe we should just cover some fake stuff with the gauze. And but yeah, look at that meat. I'm sure. I don't know. Do you think they were props or is that real? I I can't I, guess. I I honestly thought it was real because there's some now that like you see in prop houses, and it's so bad. I could that's, never that's bad. It's all bad. It looks terrible. But the real is just so expensive because we we yeah. tried to go that way too. Plus, then it goes bad. Then who wants it? And yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was looking at all these scenes in the fish scene. Um, you I have to a, wet them. You have to make them look wet or something. I'm like bloody. Yeah, something like for black. the greatest showman. I had to do like an out like door like street market, and um, you know, hey. getting like, all these baskets and barrels and stuff was just so. You know, it was hard. Oh, it's yeah. Anything where you have to get the same or more and the more than five, you're like, oh man, I gotta where am I getting all this? We have to make this or like look at all those barrels in the in the fish scene. Look at all those barrels behind them all mm -hmm. say like shh or something. <laughs> but yeah. And this set that was yeah. This is fantastic. I mean it's it looks I don't even know. Like they must have had the whole thing elevated to get the water underneath. It's crazy. This is a huge, this is a huge set. I mean, they have a lot of scenes in this set. They really use it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was great. Again, so, reminds me of Wonka. Yeah, Wonka. And it looks, um, I mean, kudos to like their, their art department and scenic department because- mm -hmm. The painting on it and everything is just like perfect. Yeah. Yeah, the scenics really went to town on this. And all the debris and everything that you got to throw in there. And yeah, that was a really great set. And then, it's, I don't know, some other part of the set leads into this really jamming bar. 
<laughs> no one's afraid for their lives. They just want to drink. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, look at, I really like the texture on all the walls and it all looks wet and damp and like gross. Again, like so many barrels and dressing and, but that cafe was pretty good. I have to go in there. I oh, know this is where this old man who like yeah, all the boys live, right? That's at their yeah. house. Or this whatever. is like everything that they steal they come back and give him and what a crazy character that guy was mm -hmm. and also nice the contrast of the colors of what they're stealing compared to where they're living it was really nice now was this the same designer who did west side story oh, let me look. it is john box and terrence marsh i think so I think Terrence Marsh did. Am I wrong? I, I know one of the ones that we're we're looking at did. Um, I think I'm wrong. Um, Doctor Zhivago. Terrence wow. did Doctor Zhivago. The Green Mile, Shawshank, Oliver. What a career! Yeah, really. I know all of these people are so influential to. Like oh, no, with Boris Levin, who did Star. But yeah, I mean, like you think about that, Terrence Marsh and all the different, like where and how long his career, you know, spanned. Yeah, there's some, you know, in doing this, some some designers did like you know 500 movies or something because they were the head of the studio and were involved in so many movies. You think like no one can do 500 movies or something, but they're credited with them, which is crazy such a different system today that we have mm -hmm. you could but it takes so much on it's crazy it takes a long time to do films now i and it must have taken a long time then i can't imagine working on two films and doing zhivago and, yeah because <laughs> zhivago was like 1965 i believe so i mean I just went right on to the next one yeah 65 yeah because i did that year <laughs> yeah this is great. This is like the quintessential like London like jury oh, yeah. judge banging the gavel. Very like Charles Dickens. And then he so gets this. Yeah. This is the one that was I looked up because I said, no, this had to be a location. They said they built this. Well, you can see this in some shots from the other street. There is an alley. I might have it. Let me go forward a little bit. Oh, maybe I don't. But there's something like there's a couple shots where you can see the white buildings down an alley. And it's like, I don't remember in the movie exactly where it is, but I, you can see all of a sudden there's like white at the end of one of the streets. I'm assuming it was this. Mm -hmm. But I think he walks them from the walks them right through I thought maybe from the from the courthouse no then they got in a carriage or something um but this is huge look at this they have a lot of scenes there you know they have that whole dancing routine yeah. uh, you know, the, I think the the maids coming out in the morning and they had to come out on the balcony and do this whole shaking your rugs and <laughs> <laughs> um it's not there's not a lot of dressing here Mm -hmm. just kind of nice that it's so stark and, and so different from the rest of the film maybe that I'm sure that was intentional there's not even a park bench we definitely have to have park benches and trash cans today yeah exactly um and then and how I don't, know, I don't know why I keep on saying I'm amazed I mean I, I mean you know 1968 it's not that long ago I just feel like wow I can't believe they did that back then no, um or accomplished it but I guess you know what am I thinking of course they well, did it's I can it's the scale of things were so big. Well, I think mm -hmm. it's it gets to you because you think, well, they were doing this back then, so why is it so hard now? <laughs> no, right? It seems like everything is so hard. Everything's so hard to do now. Why? They're, maybe they were saying the same things we do. Like, yeah, maybe what? they were they build build what and how long and you have how much money? <laughs> they were looking back at the jazz singer, thinking, yeah. what the hell? How they do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
I, I mean, this part of the movie just like makes you feel good. Like he, he's such a good kid. He finally gets to like the good, like a good pillow. Like it's so sweet. It's so nice. A nice bed and it looks really clean and white and you know. Yeah. And they have some really great shots of this. Um, like I, I feel like, oh, well, it's this one. Like these shots, like up and down, and like these long lenses. I just thought, oh, they're doing this great shit back there. And mm -hmm. this guy living it, living the high life, playing chess all day. Yep. <laughs> Two maids serving tea. It's a great story, though. It's, I mean, obviously I never read it. It so. was a great story until, you know, and again, because I hadn't seen it in so long. And then, you know, you watch the ending and I'm just like, oh my God, it was kind of dark. You oh, know? Yeah. It's a kid's yeah. Movie. yeah. I don't think it's a kid's movie. Well, you would think I always thought I was, I mean, it was on like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I watched it on like the Disney or something. And I always thought it was like a kid's movie because I watched it so many times as a kid. And I was like, well, yeah, oh, I this never, is the I really never got the ending, like you know how he killed her and stuff. That was like, oh, brutal. Yeah, yeah, the guy and the well, she was kind of a hooker, kind of. Yeah, like, she was a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh, yeah, it is. It is violent and scary. I would say mm -hmm. the scene with Oliver Reed, and then this is the ending. Ending and like it just you know that these lives are still going to go on and thieving and you know, oh. crossing, crossing the, the streets. This is the only reason I put this in here too, is look at those the candle on the, on the end of the stairway. Oh, how fantastic are those? And that mirror, really great. And such a contrast. Look at this. There's nothing really going on in this gigantic hallway. <laughs> and then your staircase is so ornate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they built, yeah, like they said, they built everything, and this is the winner uh, of the year. Do I have any other notes? Yeah. Oh, some of these sets were then used for Scrooge. Oh, wow. In uh, 69 or something. Both films were photographed by Oswald Morris. So hmm. he did both of them using some of the same set pieces, which is great. But look, look at this wet down. It's not overdone. <laughs> I mean, like I said, that's a really great shot. It's dewy. It's nice. That's probably a backing. I mean, it's really good. I understand why this film was recognized. I just don't understand how it won mm -hmm. <laughs> compared, to, compared to 2001 and War and Peace. I, I don't know how anything sort of compares yeah. to that, but. But he, like I said before, I think we say that every year sometimes. It's like, I don't think really, I had a conversation um, the other day with Bob Shaw, the production designer. I was just like, I don't feel like contemporary films or something that looks futuristic gets as much recognition as some, like a period, a period yeah. piece. Um, and I don't know if that's because people think that the same amount of um, detail wasn't put in or... I really don't know what it is, but I mean, I think like this year, everyone is high on Barbie, you know? Yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe things will change. Who knows? I think Barbie is the sci-fi of the category kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's some, some that are nominated. I, I just can't think of one set that stands out to me. <laughs> but I don't know. A Barbie to me pushes the envelope. That's yeah. You know, that's the creativeness. I, I have always thought to myself, I can't even understand how like a, like a Wes Anderson, like I thought Asteroid City was fantastically designed. Oh, that was so good looking, yeah. That didn't, didn't get any love. So yeah. Really um, depend, I, you know, I don't know. This, oh, here's our next one. Oh, I don't Ooh. know. I mean, this was a gem. I never would have watched this movie. I would have never either. I I have to be honest, never even heard of the movie. Never heard of it. Yeah. Never. never heard of it. I've seen, you know, many Anthony Quinn movies, but this never heard of it. Um yeah. Production design George Davis and Edward Carfango Carfango and set decorator Dorsey Howard and Hugh Hunt. And this story, after spending decades in a Siberian 
gulag lamb labor camp, Roman Catholic priest uh, Kirill Lok Lokta is set free by Russian leader, and then it's set in the height of the Cold War. There's a lot going on in this movie. <laughs> yep. And first, it starts out, it looks like Dr. Zhivago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh man, this is crazy. They go, This the movie starts out there in this, which I think was filmed in Iceland. Oh, Finland. This is in Finland. Um, and they go and like tap on this guy's shoulder who's out there like hitting nails in the middle of the snow or something. And they're like, hey, come with me. And he's a priest who's been put away and it's fantastic. Like all of a sudden this whole film starts to open up into these gorgeous sets that I didn't get to do much research on this. I mean, there at first I was like, are these in locations? I, I think they've, you know, they filmed around Rome and um, Italy, obviously, but I'm like, there's no way they were at the Vatican. Like there's no way that happened. So I mean, you could, I think that was like, they put footage in. Mm -hmm. And the at the end, when they're up on the balcony, you can see it was like they put that in. Um, oh, I have notes about um, the designer Oscar Warner did Ship of Fools, and Man Who Man Came the Man Who Came In from the Cold, which is also uh, very good films. George Frank had seventeen nominations, starting with All About Eve, Diary of Anne Frank. His second win was The Robe. His first was Touch of Blue. And um, he did Love is a Many Spender thing. And he's also, Davis was also an initial project man manager for Tokyo Disneyland. Oh, wow. These people are all over the place. Yeah. I don't have, I, I all I have as a note was that it was filmed in Finland and Rome. So I guess Finland was the beginning. Yeah. Must have. But um, this, this has to be a location. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. You would think, right? I would think this is a location. I think there's a couple rooms in Rome that look like this. <laughs> so I think this is a location. Gorgeous. And then and then also you get this sci-fi touch, which is fantastic. Now look at this. They didn't they didn't have 2001 to reference mm -hmm. yet, yet there's still a thread in there yeah with like the tulip chairs and um sorry I forgot about that room yeah it's a super weird room I mean this Russian leader always checking up on the priest um and it's dark and it's um I guess vibrant only in like the reds of of, of Russia and then they found this. Wow. <laughs> These are like the theater cards that they have. Mm -hmm. oh, it's great to find. But see, now look at that compared to um, like 2001. You know, yeah. the room has almost cut like this brutalist kind of like the walls, you know, like that, that starkness. But I don't think they were like they're, they're a little like the, the, the board, the keyboard type thing that the control, the control panel doesn't look as, you know, um, no, it doesn't have any lights. No, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't light look. up, but maybe that's, well, the it's, it's, it still looks good for what it is for that time yeah. period. You could, uh, you could say, I could make this opinion now. Maybe it's like that because it's Russia in the cold, yeah. War. but, exactly. but then they probably thought it was super cold. Mm-hmm. The red and the white phone. You got your blotter. <laughs> <laughs> this airplane was fantastic. The details that went into this airplane. This has to be a. They had to build this. They can't. They weren't shooting in airplanes back then. Were no. they? <laughs> I mean, the light on the seat. That's fantastic. And all the cur like the curtains, how they alternate the different colors. Yeah, I just love and uh, I love the airplane. Oh, so good. I, uh, I'm Catholic. So I was very much sort of like, well, I've never really thought about the Pope's inner world. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really like how stark everything is and monotone and then like the red rug or the red cardinals coming in. 
I thought this room was really well designed and decorated. Yeah. Those chairs are fantastic. The little details. But but it's so subtle. It is. Like what are those books? I don't even or is that drapery? I have no idea. I think it's books. By the cabinets, I think they're just books. Oh, but like you're right, the mono the everything is monotone. Yeah. And then there's a sub story which made no sense to me either of the he's a reporter he's gonna cover the, the, the wife and the yeah and the mistress or whatever's going on there yeah all I could look at was the lampshade <laughs> I was like look at that lampshade is a lace on look at the and then look at the fixtures fantastic but the whole room is like red silk mm -hmm. I couldn't like, I was trying to get that too. In like the dad looks like red damask or something. But I kept on staring at the curtains, like the draperies. I just kept yeah. on staring. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And the trim and like all of these, like there's a real contrast of like what's going on in the real world versus, you know, the Vatican, which yeah. I liked. I liked that back and forth of color and everything. And then this guy has this little circle of friends he's talking to. Um, I thought these were, these were, well, this has to be a set, in my opinion. Mm. But I don't think we went back in that back room, did we? What's going on back there? It's like a whole nother library or something back there. I don't think they were ever back there. I like that there's different chairs. Like they all pulled up a weirdo chair too. <laughs> you know, only, only the Pope gets all the same chairs. <laughs> I liked that. This guy's apartment was fantastic, or the husband and wife. Yes. Yeah. There's so much going on here and nothing really makes sense. Like, look at that blue wall above the fireplace and then a ship. <laughs> I don't know. No, it was, it was good. Yeah. It is all character pieces that was really good. This, so they were, they were, got permission to shoot here. I mean, this is real. Um, I think it looks no. I think no. this is real. They're up in. Some I was just like, there's no way they were inside the Vatican. Yeah, I don't. I agree with you, but I thought this was real. I don't no, think... that had to be. I mean, that's probably you know a street over or something. But that because that... they're at, they're kind of at the same place. Mm -hmm. in the scenes. They must have only been able to get this one garden to shoot in, and then they tried to green it differently or something so that yeah. guy's a tree oh yeah um so then the the pope dies which was also fantastic to see this whole process on the screen i thought that that was interesting um and then thinking decorating the funeral of the pope is is pretty cool yeah for sure <laughs> The, the candles and like making the velvet bed and but I remember like when the pope died years ago when I was little and my grandmother just sat with the tv she was waiting for like the smoke to come up out of the vatican yeah when yeah. they you know so that was really interesting like watching them all the different um I guess the cardinals vote on who the next pope would be yeah and how it comes about and like is it the whites when it's it's white smoke um is that when they pick white, it or... they don't i think it's white when they don't have anyone and yeah. then it's black when they finally vote for someone this to me is a location i'm thinking i'm pretty sure that staircase is fantastic yeah and the wardrobe in this film is really well done i would say and then this is um what were they building here? Now I forget this scene. I don't know. But anything in progress when you're- Oh, I think they were putting in, weren't they putting in like bedrooms and stuff for when all of the Cardinals were coming to, to like come to oh, vote or something? Oh, right. Yeah. Look at all the beds rolled up. You're right. Because they have to come from all over the world. So yeah, you're right. They were setting up bedrooms in like one of these chapels. I'm, I don't know. This kind of looks like a set. That does look like a set to me. That awesome. looks like a set. This is an awfully big build. 
But anything, anytime you're decorating something like, and it's in progress, and first we see it this, and first, and then it's that, I hate it. Because <laughs> yeah, they usually start with like, we'll, we'll, we'll see it first destroyed, and then we'll go back to what it looked like in the beginning. And then, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I usually ask the AD to have the party first, and then yeah. let me take it down. <laughs> like, I can't. Um, this is like the new studio I thought was fun. Good. just like this period like it's a really good reference and then this is spectacular this is now they i think they built this obviously duh they didn't yeah. shoot it since Sistine chapel but this was like a colors. fantastic build i mean how long did this take look at all that drapery and everything and the tables and the colors and mm -hmm. i mean the painting on the walls is a whole nother whole nother podcast but it's fantastic that's a great room and i love how like the tables and the linens on the tables match the the floor and mm -hmm. but you would look at that saying go oh that was a horrible choice of colors but it works here well it has yeah. to work here. the colors yeah. they use but it's pretty fabulous yeah i i mean i get the significance of the purple and the red i don't know where that blue came from that mm -hmm. i thought that beautiful and the flooring in this set is fantastic. And here they, here's how you're saying, like they're burning the white, their votes, they burn the votes so nobody knows what they voted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the flooring. And then you go back to the Russian guy. Now we got flags. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, it was really back and forth with like the Chinese and the Russian this I thought this card was great it was so it's so different from what they shot though all of these are toned so different there's no way you would look at this card <laughs> to promote and, this movie <laughs> yeah I would yeah I would never I'd be like what is this movie about if I just saw that I mean I think they're really just promoting who is that Lawrence who is um no I don't remember the actor's name let's say on here was it Lawrence Olivier is it Lawrence Olivier he was American why am I getting those names wrong oh my gosh because I wrote some notes too where are my notes I mean Anthony Quinn and oh my gosh was it Sir Lawrence Olivier or god I'm losing it yeah Lawrence Olivier yes you okay. yes we're good. We're okay. <laughs> well, that other guy, Oscar Warner, the like the assistant, he was in a lot of movies of this time too. And only through, you know, watching these films, he was in a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. He was a good actor. But yeah, this makes me, this doesn't, wanna, this doesn't make me want to watch the movie. I don't get it. Not at all. This is fantastic. This is like the the Pope's dressing room. And again, that red wallpaper is just fantastic. Yep. And it might even be fabric. Yeah. Yeah. And then here he's nominated the Pope and you get to see like the, the shots going up and the paintings and having those, those chairs, they had to have them made. They're not sitting around. <laughs> sure. But yeah, and then this I thought was fantastic. The Pope's bedroom. I think it was also filmed uh, in China Chita, I think. Ooh. Pages there, I read. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I think too, as a decorator, when you get like, okay, well, what does the Pope have in his bedroom? And it's such a, a thought process of like simplicity and you have to have some things and and i'm sure just like that you know just like we do today we do a lot of research there has to be research of what these rooms look like in the vatican and i'm sure they they work the same way we do or worked the same way we do or start out you know oh yeah i but they didn't have the internet i don't know That's how they true. got i think they just made them. books the libraries books <laughs> i don't I think i think this is a interpretation because I don't think anybody's taking pictures of the group's bed. <laughs> yeah. 
I think it's probably so private. It, it, and what's weird to me, is it that is that bed stand up on a box? Now that it's I look at it? On a platform. Yeah, the bed's on a platform. And then they had to, look, they had to extend it because. For the dresser, yeah, for the side table there. Yeah. Hmm. Caught it. I just caught that. It's weird. And does he really sleep in a single bed? I guess so. Uh-oh, I went too far. Yeah, I guess. I mean, ah. Uh. And then I have no idea. He went on vacation or something and went to this palatial estate. Like, and then I was like, whoa, he's really into the the Catholic money here. Like, this is obviously a, a location. It's a tremendous, it's a huge room. It's huge. It's big, huge windows and... That had to be a location. Yeah, it had to be. Not that locations are any easier to dress, but... No, not at all. Because, well, you know, for that flooring, myself, I'd be like, so what are we doing in this dance floor over here? Like, what am I what am I doing here? And it, it's fine because you have interesting flooring there. Yeah. You got two chairs and a big... I don't know what that is. With the bowl on top. I don't know what that is. Oh, they're, oh, they're all pretty yeah so then he goes out and slums it he pretends he goes out with the real people which i thought was great i thought yeah this was great going down alleys and little shops and stores and into a pharmacy and into somebody's home it was really good like like the wallpapers like it's um or maybe newspaper or anything they use for wallpaper on that left side and mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you go to this, like you were saying, like this, well, this is the Chinese government, right? Which looks like a big airport. Yeah. And then and his private plane, which of course, again, they, they must have built that. Yeah. That's definitely a build. Or would maybe they converted the other one somehow. Yeah. Beautiful drapery in that too. Um, and this had to be stock footage. You would, yeah, definitely. You would think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not. <laughs> this got me. This is, I don't know how they did this. Because they, there's no way they could, they were allowed to shoot in there. And if they were, it would have been in a note somewhere. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere that they shot inside, you know, St. Peter's, St. Peter's, right? Not a bad Catholic, I don't know. Um, I've been there, it's phenomenal inside the Vatican and everything, but um, I don't know how they got these shots. I don't know where they would shoot this to get this scale somewhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but beautiful. Maybe this is just- a lot of research on it. That's the only bad thing, you know, about this movie. I, I couldn't find tons of research, you know, you Google, um 2001 you can find so much this as far as like the making of it you really can't find much on it yeah and this this probably was done any like they could find a balcony many balconies in rome and then then they put it in there yeah i, I think the banner, i love the banner i love the draperies yeah you know, those banners made and yes yeah. awesome. Gotta have that made. And then we're back then. Then there's a small Chinese office. We're back to this. A lot of sets. I I mean, again, I thought it was really well done. It was a good movie. I I guess because of the grandness of the Vatican and everything, that's why it was nominated. Nominated. I should say that well, of course I can't find it. Um, in this year. Lion in Winter also came out oh, and wow. Funny Girl. Huh. And I would think those two would would have been candidates, definitely. Be really good contenders, especially for this next one going up against Julie Andrews and Star. Mm -hmm. I had never seen this. I never heard of this movie before. Had you? Had you seen this? No, never, never. And you know, you hear so much about Julie Andrews. I don't even know who the person that she was, um, is it Gwendolyn or, or oh Gertrude Lawrence? I don't even know. I'm embarrassed to say, don't even know who that was, but 
the movie itself, I have to say, this is probably my least favorite out of all of the movies. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, the only thing that really kept me going, I think, with this film was I liked the way they built you know you saw like the, the theatrical stage sets within the film yeah um and i thought that was kind of fun but otherwise mm, yeah it was boring i don't know if anything else like stands out for me in this um production designer boris levin and set decorators walter m scott and howard bristol and the film is about a musical biography of gertrude lawrence who led a hustling and bustling life on the stage it was nominated for seven Oscar awards and um, De Julie Andrews wardrobe designed by Donald Brooks set a record for the largest number of costumes for an actress in one movie, 125. Wow. There are 185 sets in this movie. A lot. It had a $14 million budget and only made $9.1 million to date. Wow. <laughs> so. See. I, I had read too that they thought, oh, Julie Andrews singing, we got it. Because of Sound of Music, they just assumed it would be a huge hit and it was, mm -hmm. it was not. Um, there's so many stages in this, in this movie. There's, she's on stage like almost, almost the whole movie, but they really do transition the story a lot through color, I thought. <clears throat> and there's so many dressing rooms. But this, I'm assuming, is, uh, well, I guess maybe it's a set because they build 180 sets. Maybe this is a set. I thought it, this would be a location, but it's very dark in the beginning. She's, she's very dark. And this, the dressing rooms, there's so many dressing rooms which show her stages of her career that I thought were really interesting, especially watching something like Miss Maisel lately. And so dressing rooms are so fantastic this is down and out that guy's doing dick i shaving by candlelight <laughs> they don't even have any light there's no practicals in the hallway you know it's like i don't know they're down in the dungeon or whatever but yeah i did like the theater designs yeah i, I that's what, that was my favorite part of it all. And I did like the costumes. I thought the costumes were really um, great. This is very Victor Victoria to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is foreshadowing. And here she's, you know, poor, but again, keep everything so monotone. The wardrobe, the wallpaper, the, the bedding. Um. I liked what was there there was um the living room is so dark like the world is so dark in the beginning look mm -hmm. great shadows and everything but this is another theory I mean I would think this would be a location I don't know and then we start to lighten up a little look at how big those candelabras are <laughs> Perfect. But again, the draperies. I, I what impresses me most about all these films, like the draperies. Yeah, they're beautiful. Mm. There's something nice. Like there's just a vase on that table. Like there's there's real simplicity too. In a lot of these films, very symmetrical with the two paintings. Yeah. This I can't. Remember. This like Art Nouveau starts to come, and it's beautiful. All of this woodwork and mirrors and ironwork I thought was beautiful. I can't believe this movie only cost 14 million, really. Well, 1968. <laughs> I love how everyone's in black, white room, and just the, yeah. There's some good scenes here. I think this is good. There's so many different theater sets. The back, all the different back. The, like yeah. I said, that's like my favorite part of the movie. I think the movie just bored me a little bit and that's why I just really wasn't into it. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good movie. <laughs> now you, you should, they're getting a little blue here. Just, things are lighting them up. Like <laughs> the, that was fun when she went to do the photo shoot and all the big photos of herself. 
Mm -hmm. I remember thinking like, wow, that seems really ahead of its time. Cause I think it was only like 1920s or thirties. And I was just thinking something. Yeah. Was it the photography studio. Maybe it was a photography studio. Cause this starts out in 1918. It says. Yeah. There's another stage set. I mean, this has to be, I don't know where they shot that. I don't know. It had to be a bunch of theaters downtown or something, LA or something, New York. Mm. Now we really step into some color oh. here. <laughs> it's absurd. But again, there's nothing on the walls. Mm -hmm. And look how like the draperies, I think a lot of it, like the trim, the wall, the draperies, everything was like the same tone. Yeah. I think that was in a couple of different sets. I was like, wow, they use like the same. It yeah. was like, <clears throat> there's a blue kind of like blended everything blended in it's fantastic like this then this is a, another one of her dressing rooms and the blush and the pink and like but again look at the, uh, those pictures on the wall it's bad it's not good i don't know no. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know then yeah look at this this is fantastic the stage sets, like I, like I said, were really great. And I am and I wanted to go back and see if like the production designer started. Well, a lot of them did, I think, like as a um, theater designer. Oh, that, I like the walls there. And I was like, is that wallpaper? Was it painted? Or is it mar like some like faux, like marble they were trying to achieve? This room was fantastic. Now she's really made it. Like her walls are just coming alive. It's so yeah. cool. This was like my favorite that drapery and even then she it's still like monochromatic but like rich now it's like mm -hmm. nice so many chandeliers in this movie and was this she, also shot in london um, this movie we can look but then we go she falls in love with this guy and i mean they give him blank walls yeah this filming locations were, oh, I have the wrong movie. That's just all, everything is wood. See, it's all like the same. Everything's the same tone. Yeah. I wonder if that was done purposely. I thought this was great with the shadows. Nothing there, but it's still very dramatic. <laughs> yeah. This was um, the Dennis, in Dennis, Massachusetts, the Cape Playhouse, London, England, New York City, and then wow. Fox um, in L.A. Fox hmm. Studios, stage 21, stage 22. I mean, they only had two stages. That's crazy. <laughs> that can't be right. <laughs> like 185 sets, you only had two stages. I don't know. That was fun too. Yeah, this is fun. This is like her big scene, this little, this big circus act and how there's so much going on. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, Good sets, but it was not a good movie. That was a bad movie. I could okay. see why it would be nominated, but again, Funny Girl was up this year. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, well, here it is. <laughs> the epic. That's the epic. The epic. Now, you chose this war, and then I emailed you back saying, I just want <laughs> you to know <laughs> War and Peace. And it's All right. I'm going, I was afraid at first, like, oh my God, I really have to sit through like whatever, six, seven hours of this movie. Yeah. I actually enjoyed this movie, subtitles and all. Absolutely. Um, I think I, I love like these big epic, you know, films. And that's like, I was just watching that going like, wow, I wish I, that's like something I would love to work on. Yes. Uh, but I also thought the story was, it was well told and um, I don't know. I liked it. I really liked it a lot. I feel like it's one of those things like, because I never read it, like, oh, I'll get to that at some point. Like when, when there's a strike and I have seven months off, I'll get to that. And look, that's what happened. Um, but I feel like it's something I've always wanted to watch, but never did. I totally agree. The subtitles didn't deter me at all. I think it was just so well made, every part of it. and I. I was bummed because I watched it with my husband who was totally into it too, but we could only, I would have liked to actually watched it four nights in a row mm -hmm. to have it fresh, but we watched it probably over like two weeks or three weeks or something. 
And I was like, oh, I want to see the next like episode. You know, it's it was good. It was really good. It was. Um, and it looked, it looked, I thought it looked fabulous, especially um like those big battle scenes and uh I mean everything about it just looked really, you know, it was great. So this uh so war and peace, I'm I cannot, I can I will totally not be able to pronounce any of these names. <laughs> Cal Bug Donovan. Bogdanov <laughs> and Gandhi Mayas Nico Mayaskanov and then set decorators Georgie that's a good one Koshilov and Vladimir Yuvaro there you go all right I'm better <laughs> I, I'm so bad with names it's so depressing uh the Russian um as Russian prepares for the French invasion on the eve of 1812. So when you chose this, I was like, well, it's four different movies. Which one did they nominate? Um, because they actually came out in Europe starting, I think, in 1962. Mm -hmm. So, but the whole thing was then released in the U.S. in 1968. That's what I could gather on why it was eligible in this one year and not taken as one film at a time. They released them all, mm -hmm. which I kind of feel like it's kind of unfair. Like, <laughs> because well, like a, a series, but I don't know. I read that it was like three years in the, it took like three years to make or something and budget translated, I think to like 60 to $70 million of what yeah. the budget was, which is absolutely insane to think of that. Um, yeah. And they had to use the government's horses. They I, yeah. So many horses in the film. I read that. I read that. Um, I think the government was so involved in it. And they were also saying that I think like their army or, um, you know, Russian army were used as like background. And I also read that over like 40 or 50 museums or something like that donated furniture and chandeliers mm -hmm. and like silverware and and like table dressing so that the movie could be authentically correct. That's um, I mean, can you imagine today like that? It'll never no. happen. No, the insurance on it, no, it would never happen. Yeah, but it just seemed like so many people were involved in getting this movie made. It was also great watching this and then having watched Napoleon this fall too and the same scene really when you you know it's like the difference of of the realism of the real horses and then the, the you know our modern day take on it I really like that this is I mean these sets are fantastic I actually don't know how this didn't win yeah I feel the same way I don't know it's unfair when you have you know like Emmys and everything we have, like period contemporary or ADG awards, you have different categories. Uh, Oscars, I don't care. You get one shot. <laughs> it's only five minutes. So I think it's so hard. Yeah. The, all of these sets, these big, huge ballrooms. Look at those chandeliers. All of the the candle lovers on the walls and like mm -hmm. so beautiful. It's insane. But this has to be, I can't believe this is, a, this is a set. That I, that I think probably is a location. It has to be a location, right? Has to be. I know my pictures are kind of bad because I took pictures. I took so many pictures off of my own screen while watching it. Mm -hmm. I loved this bedroom. That is great. Look at the, yeah. And the again, green. like the soft goods, the, the, yeah. The satin green bedding. bedding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then another around the bed, and again, like you see the red damask walls. I think that was a big deal back then because I, we had red damask walls we did for the Gilded Age, so that must have been a popular um, choice. Rich, Rich yeah. choice. <laughs> <laughs> These sets again. I mean, talk about drapery in every set. I mean, so much yardage. I think too. Well. I think what gets me too about this is, oh, <laughs> being so naive and dumb. Well, the Russians really had a, had it going on in their filming 
Like they were really into the film industry. Like, I don't know what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their film industry is. And this is such a huge project to take on. I, I actually, then I was like so interested in um, this Russian um, furniture. It was so gorgeous. I think this one is a set though. I, I, yeah. And again, look at the chandeliers. I mean, everything. That looks they're like a real floor. In, yeah, they're in here a couple of times. That other room, I think that was only like once or twice. I could be wrong though. This Amazon, they had like an atrium in their house. It was really, it was a lot. A lot yeah. of <laughs> they like they bring a greens person in. Who was in charge of that? Yeah. <laughs> it was kind. Of, it was overwhelming. I was like, whoa, there's all this greenery in the middle of like Russia in the winter. But these. I mean, I, it really goes on and on. So many sets that are grand, but yeah. really that table should be bigger, right? Yeah, definitely. But look how the room, it's still kind of, you know, it's sparse. It's not, there's not like a ton of dressing in there. No. But yeah, it gets the point across, you know? Yeah. I guess, it, I mean, I just noticed that that table should be bigger. Too big. Too I think the table should be bigger for the room. Yeah costumes are fantastic this little love seat which plays such a role in the movie this guy is like um proposing to this woman it's so sweet and the big mirror behind them and mm -hmm. this residence that they had was great this huge dining room i mean look at these tables and chairs so where do you where did they get all those chairs at the same yeah i'm thinking about that sony or like you know <laughs> omega yeah. Yeah, right. You know, we see the common thread here through all of these movies, like the, the use of red. Mm -hmm. you know, every All of the movies that were nominated, it's like red is such like, a, it just stands out in all of these films. Yeah, you're right. I wonder if there was something with the cameras and everything and like, um, I mean, besides the visual, just trying to get that on the screen too. I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh. Part two. Okay. We're moving along. Another wonderful bedroom with the drapery. And so much, I mean, this is such fantastic research too. It is. I think is this one I, I was like wondering, I was like, wow, look at the walls, like the color of the wall, like this kind of like purplish. Um, I think there's another room that's kind of purpley too. And I was like, oh, like it's the choice of colors just really yeah. got me. But it's so matte. It almost looks like a fabric too, like a suede or something. Oh, and then she, this poor girl. <laughs> poor girl. Uh, this grand ball is another fantastic, amazing ball that she gets to go to. It's the same room as before, different night. She gets to go to the ball. But still, so many extras. I mean, I wonder what that location was. The use of mirrors in the film too, I thought were great. Mm -hmm. Because the scene with that guy on that love seat too, I think when he kisses her, it's in the reflection and and her, she does a lot of deep diving in the mirror, looking at herself and poor That's girl. Great. Yeah, there's like another mirror shot. Yeah. It's all so well done. And then this prick, this guy, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a jerk. What a jerk this guy was to this poor girl, like leading her on. I think I love her. Oh, it's, you gotta watch it. It's I real. Think he's too old for her. <laughs> yeah, he was way too old for her. Too old. But this side by side uh, split screen that they did, like her telling of her night and him telling of his night, that was really well done too. Mm hmm yeah i i mean this has to be a set but just it's so again everything's so symmetrical yeah it's so pretty this was fun oh yeah that was fun we go out to this to like the uncle's cabin or something this i feel like is some good research of something i would have never thought of like having 
these fabric couches and everything in like a log cabin. <laughs> but you're right. Like watching these movies, I'm like, wow, yeah, I should look at old movies more. I mean, I do for some research, but some of the movies that you would never think of to go back and look at. Yeah. Some really things in here. Yeah. And they're time appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. This was gorgeous. This has to be. That's great. That has to be somewhere. Yeah, obvious. Painted. And she's gorgeous again. The drapery behind her. So many candles. Mm-hmm. This was this Rug guy. On the wall. <laughs> yeah, this guy's room was fantastic. Rug on the wall and then put your swords on it. I put the swords and the guns on it. Yeah. That has to be a real thing. I don't that, think the decorator made that up. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, that has oh, to be research way. proven. It was so weird. Because now I think like, even if you did that, you would back the, like, you can't even see the guns, really. You would back the guns with like a piece of wood or something to make them stand out. Or maybe it was like a last minute set, like, hurry up, get something. <laughs> I can't think of anything to cover the wall. Or maybe there's a big hole in the wall or something. Yeah. Oh, set that cover it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I've got this rug over here. Dressers. <laughs> yeah. Now again, they use this room again, the blue. This part three is where it really went sour <laughs> for these <laughs> poor people. But then here comes Napoleon. I mean, this was even the yeah. army. The army scenes and everything are so phenomenal. I spoke with um, Arthur Max and no, I'm forgetting your name, the decorator. And um, she was talking about all the tents and uh, all the fabric and everything for Napoleon's tents. It was fun. But yeah, that guy is really in, in, into nice things, Napoleon. This, these battle scenes are the battle phenomenal. Scenes. They were. I'm in awe of these battle scenes. I don't know if I can think of another film cinematically that compares to this. I would think of something more like to date. Well, you know, but what is but that? This uh, was real. Getting private <laughs> Ryan, you know, or like, you know, no, it's what, yeah. Like Glory, maybe Glory had huge battle scenes. I can't think of anything. This was just so epic. Mm -hmm. All of these sprawling hills and people and deep background that you know are real. Yeah. It was amazing. Banners and flags are all beautifully done. Mm -hmm. There was costumes, winners and losers, the decay of these soldiers. It was, uh, it's no, it inspiring. Really? And this is Russia. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You're very proud of this movie. Yeah. It seems like it was, um, as you said, like the whole, the government, the military got involved. Everyone was like so involved in it. I and mean, that's at least what I read. And again, the costs that they put into it, all the money they put in, that's. Yeah, I didn't get to look up though, um, like the designer, the production designer, and like the decorator, like if they what what else they, you know, have done, like if their career kept going, or if there's a big career in Russia for film. Well, the set decorator, there's actually two that are. There, well, the two that we said before, they, yeah, um, they have. I can't know if there's any other really big they're all Russian films so I can't really say yeah, actually Georgie two three four five six seven eight eight films and two television um projects so not that much War and Peace actually is his last thing and the other decorated War and Peace is their only credit and hmm. then the production designer the top build production designer Mikhail is that right? He has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Oh, he started his career in let's say nineteen forty six, and still was going in nineteen ninety. Probably like twenty five projects he has, but they're wow. all. Rough, so I don't know any of them. 
but yeah. Long career in 1990. Wow. Yeah. 50 year, almost 50 years in the business. Um, but it seems like this must have taken a big chunk out of everybody's career though. <laughs> like you probably work. This is like okay. Lord of the Rings, you know, yes. Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah. It's like working on four or five seasons of like one TV show. Yeah. Been there. It's boring. Yeah. <laughs> but people forget about you also. They're like, yeah. Even- yeah. You, that's why you got to keep moving. You got to let go. Got to let go of those characters. <laughs> Uh, they go back to this cabin and the general took it over and then they make it like a little military base. And then this is like storming into Moscow, right? Mm-hmm. I can't tell if that building's real, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know if that's a huge backing or what. It looks fake to me, but I can't tell. I can't tell. There's so well, let me, There's so many extras in the, in yeah. the streets of moscow it's absurd i have no idea how any ad could handle all of that. All of that and like when again you know they go back and they're moving their furniture and they lose everything and they're packing it all up and and all the candles on the table and the trunks and they got to get out because napoleon's coming all those frames they took all the art and left the frames i'd kill for those frames yeah but I love, look and see like your bottom right, like how they, at least they knew again, like how they dust, like the walls, like it looks like there was something there. And yeah, which is funny because there's not much on these walls. It's almost like they had to fake it. <laughs> but yeah, that's good dressing. That's good. This, I mean, look, this is insane. Look at all these oh, extras there, it's crazy. I don't know what wall this is in Russia, but like. I think that's a painted backdrop over there, I would say. Yeah, that looks like it. Yeah. But again, the scale of all this and the props and like the horse carts and those all those animals. Mm-hmm. And then dressing. Even that, right. Yeah, just. The nothingness that was left behind is great. Do I have, you know, they started to burn. I think it's coming up when they start burning everything. This had to be looking, this is gorgeous. Whatever room, whatever palace this is in. So gorgeous. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming that's all tile. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So they must have had, you know, permission to shoot in all these beautiful places. I would wonder if they are all like in Moscow. This yeah, they would have, you would have, they'd have to be, I would think. Then they burn everything. I <laughs> then they burn everything. It's insane. It's crazy. They had actors so close to fire. Mm-hmm. So many of them. I was like, oh man. I so wanted to know like how long these scenes took. Yeah. Because it's crazy. It's crazy. That's a lot of dressing there. A lot of fire too. Yeah. I don't think there was any safety meeting. (laughs) I don't don't know. Russia in the 60s, I think they were like, we're setting this building on fire, don't get burned. (laughs) Look at that. Uh, Look at all the destruction, all the burned out buildings and stuff in the background. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It's fits as a phenomenal feat of this whole four movies. It's really fantastic. That's a lot of dressing there too. Not just people. That's a lot of dressing. Then he's held up in this. Yeah, probably was gorgeous or something. I'm thinking that's a location. This dark wall. This was a tearjerker. Mm -hmm. You jerk. That guy was a jerk, right? That's the jerk, right? I think. But this I don't remember who that is. Is that her brother or no? No. Uh no, I think it's the guy that left her. I can't I can't remember now. It was. Or maybe it was her brother. And that's why it was sad. Yeah, I feel like it was, might have been her brother. Yeah. Again, the starkness of these walls and then just 
the little details. I don't even know where they are. This is a bad picture, but such a gilded Another. room they gave him. Oh, some of my pictures came out so bad. This is crazy. Where's what is this? This tile thing they put him up against. Gorgeous it's like a tile fireplace or something, like a, a like a for, to burn wood. Hmm. And the stained glass windows and a paint. lot of pattern going on there. Yeah, that it's seems very Russian. Because <laughs> look at the, even his chair that he's got his feet on is like in like all carved out and he's all depressed because they left him and now his army's going to starve to death it's that's another great that's a nice looking scene yeah just burning eating horses mm -hmm. oh, miserable and then the rebuild is unbelievable i'm out i don't i read if i would have read this i'm like i'm out <laughs> I can't do this. you want to shoot it in what order no, thank you. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. And then they're, you know, they're all a little older. The wards have gone by. Look at that green carpet. It's weird that they had carpet, actually, isn't it? Wall it is wall. Look, yeah, look how just smooth it is. Yeah. Well, I don't they had that the back Carpet. Then. Is it? I don't know. That's what I mean. Is it or is it like a painted floor? Painted cement floor? Maybe you're right. Because they didn't have wall-to-wall -wall carpet. I'm wrong. <laughs> it must be just a green painted floor. What is this? Like 1812 or something? 18. Yeah. Well, by this time, I think it's 1817 or 18. I think it spans like four or five years, the movie itself. At least. Because that kid was a baby, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, so nice. Fantastic. I don't know what that thing in the corner is, but look at the screen. Another heating element. Oh, no, there's like icons on it. Looks like Russian uh, icon. Thing. Got that see. glossy tile fireplace there, I think. Mm hmm Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad I picked 1968. because oh, me too. Me too. So other than Oliver in 2001, I would have never given the time. I would have, you know, said, oh, War and Peace. Oh, there's no way I'm going to watch that for six or something hours. Eight. Um, They're like two hours. Well, one was like <laughs> one hour. One was like one and a half. Like, I think it was like seven hours or something. And it, I didn't feel like seven hours. I don't think. Yeah. And like I said before, it just makes you, when you start a project, especially if you're doing a period film or something, it's really nice to go back and look at some of these movies. Yeah, I just appreciate the the scale and everything that went on, and and the mm -hmm. influence and so many other films and yeah. But I do, I think I would have voted for two thousand one. I think I probably would have too. I think, I think, but I wonder. I'm just wondering, like, what the voters like. Back then, if it was still, I guess the Academy has to vote for your, you know, you got to vote for your peers, but maybe they were just wondering or just thinking like, it's too out there, you know, or. Oh, uh, yeah. Know. Maybe it was too weird. It was too designed or something. And I think as, as much as I like the way Oliver looked, I probably, I would have went towards War and Peace. Yes. Between what, Oliver and War and Peace, I would have went War and Peace. Yeah. I don't know how, I I mean, if you're not going to give it to 2001, then how do you give it to Oliver over War and Peace? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just the way the voting goes. And like I said, again, like this year, it's kind of, it's going to be hard for me to vote because I, I really like all of the movies, but they're all so different. And, you know, every, every, but I find that every year they're all so different. 